In this video I will print something from my trip to Venice, Italy and I'll also cut some paper and make a test strips from the paper and I will show my setup for the printing. I bought the new cutter for the paper and I also bring some bags, so I'm more prepared this time. So let's unpack the larger and make a first preparation and cut the paper. Two. So while I'm heating up my chemistry, let's discuss a little bit the process and the maximum size of paper, what I can use in my setup. I decided I will use a few standardized size of the paper and standardized size of the negative. So I have these two plastic stands for the rolls and I hope this is the same core size what I have on the paper. And also on a LOPEC conference, I take these codex stickers, which is really fine and nice. I will probably apply them somewhere. So, and because I standardize my maximum size of paper and negative, it's much easier to make a decision about the cutting setup and the cutting size. I bought the Helitin Rise Up table for cutting of the paper with the two principles. First of all, it's this stop mechanism. It's quite simple, it's just a plastic part. And the second one, it's a holder which is pressing the paper and the guillotine cutter. So, advantage of this setup, it's maybe not crazy safe in the darkness, but what you can do, you can easily remove the cutting piece and cut whatever size you want. And you just need to put the roll on the table. So let's measure my test printer and I wanna cut the test sheets and test paper for future. The design of this test printer is not ideal, so I don't really have standard 10 by 15 paper. I personally prefer to have more opening, so I will not waste the paper and use just the top part what I'm using all the time. So in reality I need to cut one piece and cut it and the next time with a 635 centimeters for four pieces. So let's start with the initial sheets which I will cut in the four pieces and at least try to make test exposures and check if my safe light is okay, if I have no fogging of the paper. The initial plan to put the roll there and cut it in pieces and as the next step cut it in the four pieces. But for now let's start with the negative and search for the proper shot and align it on the easel because it's a lot of tests today, I will choose the negative which I'm certain will be easy to print. So it will be negative from my trip to Venice, Italy, and I for sure know my development was almost perfect there. So it means my calibration and corrections should be much easier in comparison to different negatives. As you probably know, I'm using the glass holder from Darst, and I'm using this anti-static gun to remove the static electricity from all of my negatives and from the carrier and from the paper and from the table. So it's much easier to clean with the combination with no static electricity on top of your surfaces and with a special tissues for glass cleaning. But for sure the best solution is actually wash out with the acetone and isopropanol the whole carrier and dry it in a clean conditions. Because we're talking about the glass, you need to understand more you touch it, more damage you have and micro scratches on surface. So because my paper is a little bit bigger than the paper what I print before, I need to adjust my easel a little bit. And here I just realized I almost print the full size of the paper what I can print on my table. So my drum is rated to 20 to 25 centimeters and probably without easel I can print a little bit more. But as you can understand, it's not really handy and not really repeatable procedure, so it's not for everyday printing. So I have a set of two easels, one for small pictures, because I start from them and I really like the small form. And I have this second one, which is bigger easel, which you can print for 20 to 25 centimeters. So let's scrub down the picture and make a proper magnification and align everything on my table make a focus procedure and start calibration of the color. 
The force of the picture for this type of lenses with a flat field, basically enlarger lenses, is quite critical, so alignment of the edges from left to right is also critical, but because I not really care about the sharpness, and in general the paper itself cannot resolve everything what you have on the negative. But keep in mind, the good setup and repeatability is much more handier than the quirky setups because it saves time in the long runs. For example, because I have a larger and it's always in a setup mode, I just use a plastic cover, I can stop printing any minute and I can leave it like this and on the next day I don't need to change any settings and I have exactly the same magnification, the same focus and the same settings. And this is usual disadvantage of all of the scanning setups in the modern world with the DSLR or with the modern versions of the enlargers. It's not really a device, it's not really a setup, it more looks like a temporal lab setup, not for the standardized process. For example, I usually use digital thermometer to check the temperature in my bottles before development. And if somebody doesn't know how it works, I have this Yobo caps for closed style. So if you push it inside and for example in the bottle you have a chemistry which is fuming or it's just evaporating. For example, it's really important for C41 chemistry. If you push it inside, your lid will not pop off. So it will just expand the gases and lid will stay in touch with your tank. So this is a huge advantage in comparison to Patterson tanks. And in principle, the Patterson tank not really universal, because this tank I can use for film, for paper, for different types of 120-35 mm film. I can stack it longer, I can do it shorter, I can install it inside the Yobo CPE Plus or CPE Free tool, or in the same time I can use it quickly with uh, small pieces, for example, for tests with the hand development. At the moment I'm actually investigating a little bit how the temperature, agitation and things like this change the characteristics of the colors in your negatives on C41 process and your paper printing. And so far as I understand the precision of the temperature is crazy important factor but most of the people for some reason forget about the a second important factor is agitation. And the constant rate of agitation and the type of agitation actually can change the behavior of your D-max and D-low on the color part. So it means you will have a color shifts and you will have different types of dynamic range on the color. But for my first test print, what I cut out from my new paper, which is glossy paper, I have at least no defects and it looks exactly how I imagine it. And the middle portion looks perfect color and I have a small white leader on the left to test if I have a, any type of fogging or color defects on the sides. So far I thought my glossy paper will be like too much, but for now I'm looking at this paper and this print and it's just really great. So as I said before, my settings for this print is quite neutral, so it's 60, 60, 0, f11 and 6.5 seconds of exposure time. From the beginning I wanted this print be a little bit brighter, so I measured 7.5 seconds and I just exposed it with a 6.5 seconds. And my setup for the safe light is actually quite simple, so I have a safe light taped to my enlarger and it's pointing up. And I bought this paper storage and unfortunately I realized it has a hole in the bottom. Otherwise it can be a perfect candidate for paper safe. So I will just quick and dirty modify it so I have this black bag and I will just tape it down to close this hole. And I hope with the combination of the bag it will work in the same fashion as a just standard paper storage. Probably in future I will test it directly as a paper safe or I will just modify it with the small plastic pieces or 3D printed parts. But what I realized so far, we don't really have basic supplies for the art projects like paper, paper safe, magnifiers, things like this. 
And for different types of arts, it's actually quite available. You can buy whatever you want, like brushes, color, ink. And photography in this respect is actually lacking of the suppliers, tools and just simple stuff. And I hope in next 5 to 10 years, this crazy digital rage on the art form is actually disappear. Because for me, it sounds like uh, comparing oil paint with the digital art. So because my first test works, so I will cut the maximum size what I can print. It's 257 to 182 millimeters. And this time I will try to keep my paper inside the bag, roll it up here on the cutting place and I have a setup with the black bags and I'm cutting emulsion down. So it means my safe light on top, first of all, have a double spread and double distance. And secondly, it's shining through the paper base. So this base is quite thick and it's crazy low chance to fog the paper with this type of intensity and probably in future I will make a test I will just make gray patches with the test printer and check different times of exposure with the safe light but for now I just want to take a look if my first test print looks good and my cutting and borders also look good but for sure what I can say the glossy paper looks absolutely stunning and amazing from the beginning when you put it up from the tank and it's still wet. So let's quickly dry it and inspect if they have any problems with the print and the borders. Because this paper doesn't have any significant texture, it looks more like a picture on the iPad. So for the first test print I have not even borders and additionally I don't know if you can see it here on this video I have a small line defect. I'm not sure if it's a fault of the paper or it's a scratch on the emulsion or is it just few first meters on the paper which was stored in a roll can be a little bit defective. It's not really big defect but for my handwork it's actually not really acceptable so I will just reprint it and try to align my easel a little bit better. So the easiest way if you already have a print to close it down and check if you have white borders on your print. As a next step you can take a pencil or pen and rotate the print and first of all flip it up and mark the size of the paper. With the smallest position on my easel I have around 5 millimeters on the sides of the paper. So I'll just mark it down with a red pen and if you rotate the paper you just need to put the blades of the easel in the same spot when you have a lines. And from there you can easily adjust your size and continue with your printing. It's also not crazy precise process, but for now, for example, I have ability to print square for my medium format Hasselblad, so I can take paper and print 20 by 20 without any borders and get the square picture, which I really like. And the maximum size there is 28 by 28, and I hope it will fit inside my drum. As always, new processes will give you a little bit of waste and you will waste for sure a few meters of paper on the rolls. But you know, experience costs a little bit, but in future, in a long shot, it costs nothing. And from the first test, I try to reprint the same picture and see if I have reproducible results and if I have a proper correction on the sides of the easel. So it's already late night, so I don't really have any more time to reprint this print, so I will keep it as it is. And for now I have few more mistakes which I already see. So first of all I still have small defect line on the paper but in a little bit different space. Secondly I have a strange white border on top so it means maybe I have a problem with the alignment again so I will adjust my easel and correct it in future. But this line is almost impossible to see but unfortunately it's there. But I really like the contrast, the borders, 
the look of this picture itself, the warmth and the contrast. As always, you can find all the pictures what I print on my web shop. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.